Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here, and I was so disappointed yesterday. We had our article in the Toronto Star, had a great video we put together, uh, and the power cord went out on the iMac in the middle of the upload, lost the video, and I said, oh my gosh. But anyways, it, w here's what usually happens after Labor Day is that we have a big rush of homes in that first week, and today is no different. There's 24, and I would say the biggest list in the last probably three or four weeks has been maybe 15 homes. So we're definitely back into full swing in the fall market, and uh, we start off with this one on Main Street. Uh, 244.9, there's actually two of the same model that are listed right at the same price. Uh, I like this one a bit better because you've got your 12 foot ceilings, you've got this nice fourth floor vaulted ceiling look in this one here too. It's a one bedroom plus a den, which you could, the den is actually big enough that you could probably fit like a little pull out bed plus a, uh, a bit of an office space. It's, it's not a, a bad space at all. And so that's 244.9. And then in the slightly, slightly um, different, basically the $100 difference, you're getting this one here. I like the finishes a little bit better on this one, uh, but you're not getting the ceiling effect. And so for me personally, I would take the ceiling. Plus there's the effect of being on the first floor, which some people don't like, even though we're not in the ghetto. Some people have this aversion to, uh, to being on the first floor for whatever, for security reasons. So 341 Wilson 59 is 374.9. It's electric baseboard heat. Now what it says is that the hydro is $68 a month and the gas is $88 a month. So I don't know if there's some kind of hybrid heating here or what they're doing, but the pictures are tiny. It's very hard to see any detail in this one. You do have what looks like a gas fireplace, which is what some people actually do when uh, when they do have the electric baseboard heat because you don't have your uh, forced air system. You don't have the vents or anything like that. So oftentimes they'll use the gas fireplace and then heat the whole house from there. 235 Bronte number 10 is 289 and uh, Couple for sale in this complex. This one's a little bit higher. It actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. They've done some upgrading even in the bathroom countertops and uh, lots of mature trees around. So I think these guys shouldn't have a problem with uh, with selling this one. So Septimus is 329. And so we've got a cherry wood or an Ashfield model, 1051 square feet. I think this one's overpriced, but here's what's happening. I've talked about these ones before as being high tide, low tide. In the last 60 days, we've seen very nice versions of this home sell for 302, 307, 305. And so all of a sudden there's nothing for sale. And the same model as this one that I don't think looks as nice, I just saw today has a conditional offer and it's listed at 329. So they really do go through cycles and waves and, and one good sale or one bad sale can really interfere with uh, with the sales for months and months on end. So maybe they're coming back. We'll see what happens with this one here. I'm certainly looking at the one that sold conditional very, very close. Uh, we should know by next week what it sells for. So that brings up an interesting thing. If you ever wanna know what a home sells for, give me, send me an email, give me a call. We can gladly provide that information if you wanna know what's going on around you. So Bernard is 339.9. And so this is a larger one. It's a 1356 square foot. It was called a Spring Valley back here. The new version is called the Woodbine. They're very similar models. Uh, so it looks okay. These models on Bernard and McDowell tend to go for less than some of the homes that are less than five years old. Uh, this one's probably closer to 10 years old. Lots of parkway around here, lots of green space. There's lots of things nearby. If you like open space, there's a walking trail right through the whole subdivision. So very nice stuff. I think that's good value. There's one at 334.9 that sold within about a week. So at 339, they should do just fine. We've got this one on Beaver Court, 365. And the funny thing about this one, I always like to point this out, 25 year shingles, there's not a shingle in history that was ever listed at 25 years that has ever lasted 25 years uh, without being basically disintegrated into thin dust. So there's no way that stuff lasts for 25 years. You're lucky on a dark shingle if you get about 17 years. So Stover Crescent is 389 and it's an end unit croft side. Uh, you have an unfinished basement. The all brick elevation is really nice because people 
uh, every sort of three years have to paint and do all the wood finishes on the outside. So all brick by far is way easier to take care of. And it's just a nice looking home. We haven't seen many of these homes that I consider to be like well kept. And, uh, and this one certainly doesn't disappoint. Uh, I think that it's just got a lot of pride of ownership, a lot of care, and it should sell pretty quick. So Broadway is 415. It's a bungalow, and really, I just I, there's nothing here to really go by beyond the fact that there's one full bathroom. Here's the thing about bungalows. Here's what you get typically in this area. You get a large piece of land. You get small bedrooms. You get small closets. Uh, you get an L-shaped living dining around the kitchen, and usually one full bathroom on the main floor. That's pretty much a staple of uh bungalows basically anything built in the 50s and probably early 60s that's how they built them uh timber place is 429 8 it's a hillsview end 15 10 square feet granite counters they've got the upgraded chef's kitchen the hardwood floors i think you can get more for this kind of price than something like this uh, I, historically, I think that if these models are really, really amazing, they do sell up in the 420s. I just don't know if I would be recommending someone pay that. 1,600 square feet detached home. So we're talking about bigger home, fully detached. Uh, is this one on Tillet's Landing. You could probably widen the driveway to fit two cars side by side. I'm not sure if you can do that with the current arrangement, but the, uh, there was there was a sale of a home that looked like it was more upgraded than this one for less than this one's listed for. But I do think that there's not a lot for sale uh, between 450 and 500 right now. So it does fill a pretty nice niche. It's a good floor plan too. It's a pretty popular floor plan. It's a good price point where you're almost competing with semis, but people can really just jump into a detached like that one. We've got Yates here, also a detached home at 474.9. It's a four bedroom home. I, again, not a lot of information that I've got about this because there's no photos, uh, but I would say that it's certainly looking like it's got some things like hardwood on the, uh, hardwood on the main floor, stainless steel appliances. Uh, here's another thing that I saw with this listing, basement in the process of being renovated. If somebody lists their home halfway through a project, it means to me at least that there's some motivation there. There's a reason why they've actually put the uh, the home up for sale before finishing it because obviously a fully finished basement maximizes the value. And actually we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on on a home on Savaline. So Trudeau is 489.9. And so it's uh, it looks like a Wyndham Corner and uh, the Wyndhams have been doing really well lately. You've got hardwood floors, crown moldings, California shutters, and the mismatch here is something that's pretty easy to fix. It actually looks like it has granite countertops. It says it in the description as well. Uh, there's a lot of things going on with this one. Finished basement at 489.9. We've seen very similar homes sell for 520, 525, 530. Right on the corner of Trudeau and Clark, we had one I think up at 530. So this one looks amazing. You've got a bit of an interlock driveway. The roof might need some work. It's something where uh, most of the homes in this neighborhood have at least considered doing the roofs because they're in a bit of rough shape. But yeah, amazing. Just down the street from Trudeau Park, good access to the highway. And uh, I'm a huge fan of this one. I think this one, based on some of the recent sales, you could argue that it's probably 20,000 under listed but I don't have all the information. Obviously seeing it in person gives a different perspective, but I could definitely see that one selling for over five in competition. So Kavanaugh, 519, it's, a, uh, it's, it's close to 2,000 square feet. It's got a nice looking kitchen in here, the granite counters, the nice cream color cabinets, so not stark white. The cream color tends to look a lot better, especially if you can get a good wall color there. Uh, 519 is justifiable, especially with the pond behind. Uh, I, you know, I'm just seeing a, a lot of people paying a lot of money for these homes and I would rather say to somebody that they could probably stick under five with a, a slightly smaller home and really get the same kind of floor plan. So we see that a lot like with 2,500 versus 2,800 square feet. There's not a lot of difference there. Uh, whereas you start to see around 3,000 square feet, you start to see three full bathrooms upstairs, five bedrooms, those kind of things. So 
there, there's almost little breaking points in, in different sizes where you can see that you know 100 square feet more sometimes gets you really nothing else beyond just slightly bigger rooms uh, or it could give you a completely different layout. So I just feel like if you're up to 2000, drop back to 1800, save yourself some money and, uh, and still get pretty much the same floor plan. So Mockridge is 579.9 and so it's a uh, it's a plan five so you can always distinguish the plan fives because the stairs are actually in the back of the house between the kitchen and the eat-in and the family room and to me that doesn't flow very well i i'm i guess maybe just because i'm used to seeing the stairs closer to the front of the house i just think like if kids are playing like you're constantly kind of blocking off the stairs and everything else but hey maybe it's good for somebody else uh 579 for about 2200 square feet is not a deal but it's uh, it's not incredibly far off uh we're seeing very interesting things up in the 600 range so we're seeing people that are having a tough time uh in the higher sixes and even mid sixes and so they're really starting to price aggressively we talked about the one on rolf last week something like this on shanks heights is like 28 2900 square feet something like that hardwood floors pretty open concept floor plan and uh yeah the kitchen's okay like it doesn't blow you away but it's got a builder finished basement i mean even the lights those lights have been around for like 40 years i mean it's uh, it's a shame on the builders however lots of space in this home probably it says over 4,000 square feet i don't believe in this model it's that high i think it's closer to 37 with the basement the point is it's 629 that's a lot of finished space for that money and uh, it's certainly a good sign for buyers so sometimes at the beginning of september what we find is that people are comparing to prices from july and august which sometimes can slide a little bit uh, so you can sometimes find those good deals even into september and you benefit from basically more inventory so holdsworth is 629 uh, more than 3,000 square feet it's a five bedroom home and then you've got a 41 by about 100 foot lot so all that stuff together adds up to good value same as the previous one it's a little bit bigger on the main floor it doesn't have the finished basement and it's got a, uh, a slightly bigger lot so again not bad for this kind of price uh farmstead is 635 let me just flip to the first shot here it's a uh, oh it's my phone going off so it's a plan six 2300 square feet nice finishes inside they've done a lot of work in the kitchen even customizing one or two light fixtures in key places in a home can be a great return on investment you can see the uh, the range over here you've got the built-in ovens and they've got a finished basement here too uh, really one of my favorite floor plans outstanding actually today has two of my favorite models that madame builds and uh, 635 is a bit high though you figure is the basement worth you know forty thousand dollars probably not so they're a little bit high they were out uh i think probably in the spring or something like that they tried to uh, to sell it around this price and, and it didn't work out uh holloway is 639 so we're seeing nice homes it's about the same size as the previous one and uh heathwood built home so you've got your nine foot ceilings you've got some granite countertops stainless steel the if you look at the previous one and then this one the paint colors on this one can certainly interfere with the showing and i think that they could have probably done a little bit more neutral i love the windows in this room here even though it looks like it's cut off by the wall it's just because there's a bit of a vaulted ceiling here walk out there's a ton of light in this room if you like to sleep in darkness that's not the room for you uh yeah you know you've got your nice uh, your heathwood door here I think they're gonna have a tough time like without a finished basement they're two doors down from a park uh i just think they're shooting a little bit high and a lot of the homes that it's almost like what we're seeing is the first time buyers have really pushed the bottom range down the top range is a bit slower so we're seeing contraction we're actually seeing more homes listed in in a tighter window so that's why we see like a 1500 square foot townhouse for like 420 and then we're seeing a 1600 square foot detach for 460 so there's that's what we're seeing is that sometimes the price ranges rub up against against one another double car garage is selling for almost the same as single car garages so there's a lot of competition in that four to six range that that's where 
80% of the listings are right now in Milton. So if you're in that range, you really have to be careful about how you're priced, what you're competing against. Uh, this one on Pringle, same feedback as yesterday. There's the power of sale right in the subdivision. This little section here on Pringle. Attached housing to me, I, I just, I have a problem. And I know that it's got almost 3,000 square feet. It's nice finishes and everything else. I have a problem paying 659 for a home that has anything attached to it in Milton. Okay, there's some parts in Toronto that absolutely, I would feel completely mentally at ease with that. But this one here, and it's a three bedroom. So there's there's definitely things about this that, that would cause me issues if I had a checkbook and I had that much uh, that I would spend. So Rolf Terrace 6649, not as good as the one down the street with the walkout basement and, uh, and the very nice finishes. Um, it's still relatively competitive uh, based on the last few months of sales. However, for what else is out there now, they're gonna have a tough time. Silver Court is 669 and so when you're going through this home, Tell me if it doesn't remind you of a Craigslist ad. So if you look at the pictures, hey, we've got our, our living room set for sale. We've also got our dining room set for sale. And, uh, and so the kitchen, whatever. There's a bed for sale. There's another bed for sale. And washer dryer too. So this shows nothing about the house. It just shows like stuff in the rooms. I think it's a poor representation of this home. I'll do them a favor and say, look, there's some stucco on the outside. It's about 2,600 square feet. Uh, pretty open concept floor plan. And you actually have a, a, a space above, just outside the master bedroom, a little loft space that overlooks the uh, the living room. So there you go. That's basically the uh, the story on that one. Savaline is 689. It's actually one of my favorite listings of the day. And there's a lot of hidden parts to this one that I think people wouldn't immediately recognize as valuable but they are. So inside the house you've got, it's kind of a, a different switch because you've got carpet in the dining room, but you have hardwood throughout the uh, the hallways, throughout the kitchen. Typically the places where you might expect ceramic, there's actually hardwood, and then there's carpet in some of the principal rooms. Uh, the kitchen has a lot of upgrading in it. Um, you've got some, some good finishes in there. You've got a nice floor. This is one of my favorite floor plans because you've got a, a room in the front that you can use as like an office or a living room. You have another den upstairs where it'd be great for the kids to have like a video game room or something like that. And going through the house, nice size master bedroom. All the rooms are good size upstairs. Here's the hidden gem. One of them is that you've got a 121 foot lot. The home is set back a bit further, but the yard is deep. It's actually like an old Milton yard. It's fantastic. You can fit this, you can fit an in-ground pool, a trampoline, and there's still tons of grass here too. So lots of good stuff. The other hidden part that won't be shown in the photos probably is that there's almost like a, a 70% finished basement. So the drywall's up, there's actually some extra drywall in the corner. Uh, the floors are down. So there's there, there are elements of this one that if you just put a little bit more in, wow, outstanding stuff. The basic templates there, 689 for a 3,200 square foot home. I think it's very competitive. And, uh, and this one definitely gets one of the picks of the day. It's a very, very nice home. And so we've got Chambers Place at 759, 3331 square feet. And if you look, even this compared to Savaline, to me, there's no contest. It's a little bit of a, a wider lot, but it's not nearly as deep. It's 40 feet uh, less. Uh, there was one that we showed, I think, yesterday or perhaps even last week that was 779. To me, this one's just kind of floating. It's not really in the in the position where I'd say it's a great deal. It's it's doesn't have a lot of stuff that really makes your head spin. So uh, it'd be interesting to watch. The night probably the best part about this home is that it it's on a very nice street. Chambers gets z like zero non neighbor traffic. It's it's extremely low traffic. Most people don't even know where it is because it's just just tucked away and. And, uh, and, and it's so private. So that's the list for today. If you have any questions, give us a call. And uh, I hope that we can uh, help you with your real estate plan. So have a great day.